Hi everyone, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts. And today I'm bringing you another uh, little tutorial on slow stitching. And I'm going to show you a few stitches. And I'm also going to show you um, the way I make some, some items out of slow stitch. And uh, I'm going to start with um, a question that I had regarding the edges of your slow stitch. Um, now, if you are going to sew them together, um, it, you can you can do things, you know, many different ways. You can uh, actually hand stitch them together. You can layer them on top and then um, sew them together on the machine. Of course, here you'd have to uh, sew up to here and then stop and then go over to the other side. For the for if the buttons are in the way, um, what I would suggest if you want to have a finished edge is to do a but basically you can do it one of two ways. You can either um, have the fabric extend, which this one does not, but have the uh, fabric extend beyond your. Uh, slow stitching when you when you first do it like say you did say you did this one and left left an edge around the muslin this is done on a piece of muslin and left a, an edge on the piece of muslin like this and then you could uh, turn it under and finish this edge by hand and then your um, slow stitch would be uh, sort of finished but with the raw edge, but then underneath you'd have a, a folded edge. That's one way of doing it. You can also do it with a um, edge stitch or an applique stitch if you want to call it. I'll show you how to do that. Um, these hearts, I finished up these hearts. They're done. They're edged with a slow stitch all the way around. And then I also sewed these on the machine. You can see on the back how they're sewed on, on the machine. And the edges, before I started, I, I did the edges with a pinging shears, and that gives it a finished edged look also. Okay, so for the edges, let me find one here. Well, I can't find one immediately that has a finished edge, so I'll just I'll just show you on this. This is the one I'm working on now, and I'm almost finished with it. I still have a little bit to do on the, on the center part, but I'll show you how how I might do the edges. Now, along this this part where there's this lace, I I like that. I don't want to do any kind of edge stitch on that, so I'll start where it ends, and then basically. I have a knot. I'm gonna down a ways like so. I'll come back up. Oops. And then I'll go down through that through that loop. So that it's like a loop, a loop on the edge. the loop. Okay, and this is just another way of doing it that's a little bit easier. You can make the you can make the loop so Then you turn the corner and you do the same thing. Show you this a few times so you can, you can see it done. So you kind of put the needle in towards you. This is a little bit easier than the first couple of stitches that I took. Okay. 
and this doesn't these don't have to be all exactly even if you're a perfectionist you might want to make them that way but if you're a perfectionist you probably won't be doing this slow stitching because it's not a perfectionist type of thing it's more of a um, a loose type of stitch okay so you can see how that's how that's coming along there and it's giving me more of a finished edge on my on my piece so I would continue all the way around most the time I change colors as I go like I might do blue for a while and then change to another color that I have inside of here or I could do all around in the same color however you want okay so put that aside for now that's how you would do an edge this one if you wanted to make it into I think I'm gonna make this one into a book cover it's the it's the cutest little book cover I think so how would you do that? Let's see. I think I'm going to use a piece of manila envelope. Okay, this was just laying on the table for the for the background. Okay, you can put it against the edge of the manila envelope like so if you want and then mark it you'll want it to be just a little bit less than the uh, now from edge to edge these probably aren't going to be super even you can cut them off to be even if you want but um, I don't I just get it as even as possible when, before I start and then I can clip off if I have like for example a piece of fabric that hangs over I can clip off that but I want it to be just a little bit smaller this is going to act as a backing and it's going to also act as a um, a place to glue down this this cover piece so I want to make it going to spread it out so I know how how long to make it okay and now I can either connect my lines with a ruler and cut it by hand or I can use a paper trimmer I think I'm gonna go for the paper trimmer so let me get that out Yeah, I am cutting two at once because this um, this is a double envelope, but I, I can use that for a, another uh, another envelope. I can make an envelope out of it or a pocket or anything really that I wish. And I'll save these pieces for background papers. Okay, so it looks like just measure it against here one more time measure twice cut once okay. so this is let's see yeah this is my this is my folded edge actually it's it's this way Got two folded edges. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Had it turned around. If I'm in doubt, I usually try to, to trim it just a little bit bigger than what I want it, because I can always trim it back down again. And now this can this can be used as a as a um, as a pocket or another book cover however you want to do it let's put this away I am going to be having a um, 
a drawing for prizes coming up. Um, and I will uh, have the video up for that shortly in, after February starts. This is a little bit too um, too large on the on the edges, so I'm gonna clip that down a bit. Get my smaller paper cutter out. And my um, my giveaway will be uh, for a journal and uh, one of these hearts that I made for the first prize. And it'll also be a, a smaller journal and a heart for the second prize. So I will uh, put out a video when it's, when it's time for that. And once again, I've said before, on previous videos, but it's to celebrate my being on YouTube for a year. It's a year in February. Okay, so let's see a sliver off of this edge. Hopefully I don't cut it too short. I think I'll be okay. Okay, now I can do this two ways. I can wait until I sew in pages into this little book and I can just actually I could sew in the pages on my sewing machine if they're if it if it's not too thick and then I can glue it into here glue it onto the front or I can glue it now and then um Sew the spine in by hand. So I think I am going to wait on this one. Since it has a button kind of near the spine, I'm not sure. And also I'm not sure how this would work poking through here. I am going to try it on, a, on another one. But on this, this tiny little one, I think I'll wait till I get the, the papers in here. Okay. That's that one. Now, another thing I wanted to show you was that I made that I was pretty pleased about. Oh, here's another book that I'm gonna that I'm gonna show you in, in glue. Finally, oh here it is. This is a little this is a little pouch that I made out of a slow stitch. Now on this one, a pouch that opens. It does have a grommet here at the top where the where the ribbon is attached. And this was a slow stitch where I did do the stitch all the outline stitch or the um I forget what this is called, applique stitch of some kind around the edges to kind of hold it down. The only ones that don't have it around the edges, the only part is this pink lace here because I didn't want to interfere with the way that looked. Okay, and this is all this is is simply um, made like into an envelope. And then I uh, I didn't even sew it. I just glued it on the on the sides. Okay, then I put the grommet in here at the top. And um, the longer the longer ribbon goes around. And then it ties in the front. If you wanted to make it so it didn't so have it so it didn't tie, here's another way you could do it. Just put the the ribbon on. Actually, you would just have to put one ribbon on, and then tie it around like this, and tuck it in, like so to open it. Okay. So I thought this would be really cute. And you could do it with you could do it with a I did it with a um, envelope 
backing, but you could do it with a piece of fabric, and you can make it a little bit bigger, uh, maybe to put, uh, uh, maybe even to use as a, as a uh, little wallet or a purse. Okay, so that's that one. This one is one that I made as a as a um, as a book, and I put the pages in. What I did was I did a hidden spine, sort of the same method I used for the uh, letters to the bride book that there's a video on uh, a couple of videos ago, and I glued that down into the inside of the spine. This is a piece of cardboard from a rug that I bought. And I sewed this slow stitch piece. This is going to be a book on birds. This is an applique bird off an old um, a pair of curtains in my great niece's room. Uh, then I had little charms of feather and an owl. And I'm going to glue this down to the cardboard. Now I have already attached a ribbon going across the top, across the um, cover, front and back, and I uh, adhered it down with a little bit of glue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the entire cover to uh, this backing piece. I'm going to get out my fabric tack glue and go around the edge first of all that ribbon is going to get caught in the middle of the between the um, the slow stitch piece and this cardboard and so it will act as a um, just as a side ribbon. You'll just be able to tie it on the side. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it around. Here it is. So make sure you get everything covered. Now, of course, the fabric tack has. A while to dry. I'm going to make sure I have this ribbon on the edges fairly straight. And I'm going to this on. And I want it to come to, I, ha, I have already tried this and it, and it just fits on this cardboard piece. So what I want to make sure that I don't have anything showing on the side, on the side edges, and I, that uh, fabric tack gives me a little bit of maneuverability to be able to get the edges the way I want them, and then of course the inside part. Now you'll notice I still have. A little bit showing on the top here. <clears throat> this piece of slow stitch that I did was not even going up on here, so I don't mind that this isn't even on here. I could, if I wanted to, uh, do a little bit more um, unraveling to make it appear to be a little bit more even. Don't unravel it all the way down, just on this end part. And I could unravel it all the way, like that, like this is here, a, a little bit more on there. Okay, so that worked worked pretty good. Okay, and this this isn't finished yet, but it will have it will have some more bird stuff in it. And this will probably go in my Etsy shop once I get it finished. That's a cute little size. And what I did was I just made it 
a size that would fit the the um, slow stitch piece that I had. I I just make the slow stitch pieces and then and then make things out of them. Same as you do. You might want to start if you're just starting slow stitch. I suggest you start with the with the slow stitch roll, which I'll show you here. I've showed this many times. a slow stitch roll where you just take a length of fabric in this case it was kind of a, a damask fabric but if I was a beginner I would just start with the length of muslin and just just start on one end and just keep just keep adding stuff and um, refer to my some of my other videos that I made on slow stitching and just keep moving along. You can skip to one another part and then go back to this part, you know. Whatever you feel like doing. You don't have to do like the like this whole little section and then this section. Just, you know, kind of spread it around. Maybe use the same fabric you used here and then use it over here and then go back. And it's a method of pinning down or using a glue stick to lightly glue down. Most of your edges will be sewn down with the slow stitching, but if you want an edge to to um, go down a little bit better, then just add a dab of the white glue and that'll work. And then these, of course, can be cut up and made into tags and pockets and so on. Okay, let's see another method here. Oh, here's one, and I ha actually have several like this. This was a slow stitch piece. It measures 12, so six, the book is six, six wide by, I believe six, yeah, six, six by six. So it's a square book, and that'll make kind of a nice, that'll make a good book. I tried this, I thought, well, maybe I could make it into a pouch, but, um, Everything there's there's a lot of things that seem to to uh, be okay going vertically, so I wanted to leave it going vertically rather than turning it this way. So so I can make this into any kind. This is just the book cover. I can make it into anything I want, any kind of book. Um, I believe this will go on my my Etsy channel as a, a slow stitch book cover. And here's another couple of book covers that I also made, which will go on my Etsy as book covers. This one, I most this one's kind of on a thin fabric, and it's just on the one. It's not on the back, so I most likely will back this with a um, probably a Manila uh, file folder. So I'll use that. I'll cut that the same way I did the envelope. And use that as a as a as the cover. Okay, and here's another couple of book covers that I made. This is these are just another couple of pieces that I made. Okay, another couple of book covers. This one's on a thinner piece of fabric, so I will either back it with fabric or I'll put it on another. And lastly, I have another book cover. Hello again. Back a little bit here. This is the last one, and, and this one is on a um, a piece of fabric, and this one's actually sewn down on the front. It's actually sewn down, so this will probably be the cover. I'll probably just um, either make a book out of it, or I'll put it on my Etsy and sell it as a just the book cover. So I hope you've learned something today, and stay tuned for my video on the giveaway which will be coming up in in February this video will probably go up uh, the first part of February also and continue with your slow stitching these methods can also be applied to any other kind of uh, fabric 
piece that you might have, a quilted piece or a um, uh, just a, uh, a plain fabric piece. You know, maybe you have a piece of upholstery fabric or something like that. This this uh, method of making a book out of it can also be applied to that. So, thank you for joining me today. I wish you peace of mind.